far, uh, you, you, you're nobody until uh, Jesus says that you're somebody. And verse 2 says, right. he, he, he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who has come from God, for no one could, conform, could, could perform the signs that, that you are doing if God were not with, with him. Even in that text, it talks about Nicodemus coming to Jesus at night. And there's two schools of thought. There's several schools of thought about why, why it's at night. Uh, under the cover of darkness, not wanting to be, be viewed and seen by others. Or, or, or it could be just the fact that this is so profound. Uh, we were talking about it earlier. Is maybe he just wanted some alone time with Jesus. You know, and, and that's always a good, a good thing. Uh, just, just me, me and Jesus by ourselves, talking. You know, there's nothing wrong with corporate prayer and, and, and corporate worship, but there's nothing like alone time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so I'm thinking about that, 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 and indeed, maybe, may, maybe the reason also. You know, uh, just wanting that time by himself, just him, him and Jesus. I got some concerns. I got some things that I need to ask you. You know, so so Nicodemus asks this question. He said, "For no one could be, be, perform the signs that you are doing." <laughs> Verse three says, "Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless you are born again." <sighs> and again, Nicodemus is so so uh, moved by that statement. Being he asks a question, how? Can someone be born again when they're old? Nicodemus says, surely uh, they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Mm -hmm. You know? That, that, that term, that phrase, born again. You know? Those of us who, who, who have been born again, we know what it means. Mm -hmm. You know, we know, uh, 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 actually, we can actually pinpoint in, in most of our lives, that date, that time when that transformation happened, when when we were born again. Mm -hmm. But this is this is where that term comes from in, in 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 the Christian life, in the gospel, new birth, born again. You know, but Nicodemus is, is confused and he asks the master, how, how 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 can someone be born again? How? Someone is old. How, how can they enter a second time into the mother's womb? And Jesus gives them a clear understanding of, of, of what he's saying. He says, hmm, verse 5, Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Mm -hmm. hmm. Flesh gives flesh, flesh gives birth to flesh. But the spirit gives birth to spirit. Hmm. You should not be surprised by my sayings. You must be born again. For the wind blows wherever it, it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. And he says, so it is with everyone born of the spirit. You know, we have no idea how, how to, to, to gauge the spirit of God. Even to see it coming. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and until it arrives, you know, and, and the unique thing about it is that once it arrives, when, when I start so looking at that verse uh, about water and the spirit, uh, there's several scripture references that, that I want to want to relate to. And, and the first one is from the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 36. Uh, again, a, very, a book that we're familiar with, because it, most of the time when we talk about uh, the book of Ezekiel, we all always re relate to that, the, the story about the dry bones when God asks the prophet, mm -hmm. son of man, can these dry bones live? live? You know, and, and they came together, you know, they, 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 they joined each other and, and indeed they did come together, right? But it's kind of unique because it's the, the scripture says that they didn't, it, it wasn't until the breath of life, the spirit of God was blown into them. That, that made the difference. That's a lot like Adam in, in the garden when, when, when God made Adam. You know, he, he, the text says he became a living being 
but it wasn't until scripture says that God blew the Rojas, the, the, the breath of life into him, the spirit into Adam, that he became a living soul. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that's very neat. But mm -hmm. in our, the book of uh, Ezekiel, chapter 36, we read this at, at, starting at verse 24. He says, I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from, from all the countries and, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and, and, and from all your idols. I, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And again, verse 27, he says, I will put my spirit in you and, 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 and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Uh-oh. And, and, and move you to follow Recording my in progress. Hmm? Damn. Okay. Got it. You know? So, so the thought of uh, uh, the washing, the water and the spirit being connected is, is, is not new. Right. There's one other verse that I want to relate to, and that that in, in our New Testament, I, I think it's chapter three of the book of, of 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 Titus. Titus chapter three. Again, cha Titus chapter three. I'm, I'm reading it. Starting at verse three, hmm. <laughs> and, and, and the writer is talking about us. I know he's talking about me. <laughs> he, he, he says, at one time, you two were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, it being hated and, and, and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we've done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewed and, and renewal by the Holy Spirit. You know, mm -hmm. so again, that 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 washing and the indwelling of, 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 of God's Holy Spirit is what you know brings us into new life, who that gives us that new birth. And in verse nine. Uh, Nicodemus again asks that same question. How could this be? Nicodemus uh, asked. <laughs> Verse ten. Jesus says, "You, you, you are Israel's teacher." Jesus said, "And you do not understand these things." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, "Very truly, I tell you, we we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we've seen, but still, you people do not." Accept our testimony. I've spoken to you of earthly things, and, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. You know, and, and that, that that's powerful. You know, it, it, it's 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 like imagine attempting to describe to an unbeliever what God is like you know it's it, we, we can't do it not not only imagine describe to another believer what, what he's like in our own individual lives we we know matter of fact my grandmother used to describe him as as being a <laughs> a wonder that he's he, he's he's a wonder you know down down in my soul <sighs> It's a very interesting uh, portion of this text. I want to take a, a bit of time to talk about. And this is verse 14 and 15. When well, Jesus says this to, to Nicodemus, he says, just as Moses uh, lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Jesus uses to serve Moses and, and, and the children of Israel. Um, 
what takes place, Jesus is talking about uh, in the book of Numbers, chapter 21. The book of Numbers, chapter 21. Okay. We know that other song, too, where it says, if, if, if I be lifted up. Mm -hmm. if, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. You know, but he he he's referencing what takes place here. Now the children of Israel have been so disobedient to God. You know, they were complaining about about not having water. They're, they're complaining about the diet. Here, God it was pro providing them a meal every day, the manna that came from heaven. But yet they were still complaining. You know. <laughs> These people begin to, 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 to cry out. And God uh, uh, caused the serpent. The people were saying that we're sick of, uh, of this often. Awesome God and his judgment for the ingratitude sends fiery serpents, snakes, poisonous snakes into their camp. And the snakes start mm -hmm. biting the people. These people mm -hmm. begin to cry out. And cry out, repenting to God, seeking salvation. <laughs> and mm -hmm. God tells Moses to make a serpent. Uh, to, uh, to place a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And to hold it up in the midst of the camp that anyone who would Ooh. look at that bronze serpent would be saved. You know, isn't that, it's kind of strange. Strange. Let's see what happens. Again, he says that's an odd thing for, for, for God to do. He could have used any, anything else, right? He could have used an eagle. He could have used a mongoose, which are uh, uh, immune to snake bites. Uh, but God actually makes them look so that they can uh, resist the, 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 the... God uses the very thing that, that's killing them to save them. The very thing that, that, that was biting and killing the people because they're because of the ingratitude, right, uses that. God says, no, you have to look upon the thing that brings you death. You have to look upon the thing that, that has brought death into your life. That just as a serpent in the garden brought death to the entire human race through the sin and fall of humankind, and that and Adam and Eve in that garden with that same snake, these, these, these serpents has entered your camp and, and started biting you, and, and you have to look upon your death. And that's the way you'll be saved. Anyone who believes that God will provide salvation in this way, <laughs> he, he, he did. And he promised to do. He promised the people that they will be saved if they look upon this, the, the snake, that the serpent that Moses was lifting up, because that's what God instructed him to do. <laughs> You can't be saved by looking at a bronze serpent. Jesus says in the same way, so must the Son of Man must be lifted up. The same way that, that Moses lifted up that, that, that bronze serpent in the wilderness. It says in a, in, in, in a few passages ago, we, we were talking about Jesus turning uh, water into wine. You, you remember that story. Jesus talked about his his not being his hour. And again, Jesus' hour is, is when he has to face the crucifixion. <laughs> when Jesus cleansed the temple, he was talking about the destruction of the temple. And the temple he was talking about, he was talking about his body. He said, destroy mm -hmm. the temple and, and I would build it up in three days. Mm -hmm. And they misunderstood. He, they understood that he was... They, perceived that he was talking about the physical temple, but he wasn't. He was talking about his physical body. <sighs> uh, here he talks about being lifted up. He was talking about being lifted up on a cross. <sighs> and again, we sing that song from this portion of scripture. If I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And from then to now, that picture of Christ on the cross, uh, paying the, the price for our sins is what, 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 what draws believers to him. What he's saying is that it, it, it doesn't really uh, make sense, but it happens. 
and you have to read the rest of the story of John to figure it out. But what Jesus is saying is saying, look, I'm, I'm going to be lifted up and killed. <laughs> and you have to look upon me because in my death, you are seeing the death of your uh, seeing the death of your death. When I'm lifted up on the cross, <laughs> you're seeing the Father's love so much that He's given me to, given me to die for you. He said, I haven't done any, anything wrong, but I'm dying for you <laughs> in your place so that you can be saved. Mm -hmm. Look upon your death by seeing my death on the cross. You know? I mean, that's how mm -hmm. I interpret those two verses. But we get to the next verse, the next verse, the next verse, which is so powerful. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and most of us who, who have been to church more than a day or two have heard that verse constantly. You know, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't think we hear it correctly. When, when I hear that verse, I, I, I hear not in a casual way. The text says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. Now, but when I hear it, you know how, how I hear that verse? I'm thinking about God's love, grace, and compassion in our life. You know, that, 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 not, not just one one oh. Not, not just so. Mm -hmm. I, I envision Christ saying for, for my daddy, my father, God, so love the world. You know? And then we were, mm -hmm. we were, we were much younger and we, we, we tried to convince the person that we were dating or our, our, our future wife or whatever, how much we loved them. We didn't say it so casual. We had at least 10, 10 O's to that so <laughs> or 12. You know, not not in a casual way, but but with some emotion, some feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, for God so loved the world that He gave. Hmm? It says His His only begotten Son. Right, that that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know. <sighs> Isn't that powerful? Isn't that good to have a last name of, of whosoever? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whosoever. One of the things that fascinates me must have, a, a, a great deal about salvation is, is that the requirement isn't, we don't have to jump through a lot of hoops. The only re requirement that, that, that God gives us for salvation is belief in his son, Jesus. Listen what the text here. For God so loved the world that he gave his, his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I'm not even sure if we even, even understand that concept of, of everlasting life. You know, that, that's not, not, not a day or two. You know, we sing that song, Amazing Grace. Uh, uh, a verse is a verse in there which says that when, but when, when we were there 10,000 years, mm -hmm. you know, bright shining as the sun, mm -hmm. we have no less days to sing his, his praise than then we first begin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, that, that, that's going to be our role. Our responsibility once we get there is, is to give him glory and worship him. You know? And, and the whole idea is that we're planning and, and preparing for that now. That's the hope. You know, not, yeah. not even to mention the fact that the way things are going now in the world, that it, 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 it truly appears to me as if we're closer to that, that day of my master's return than we've ever been. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, than we've ever been. And again, mm -hmm. <sighs> The thought is, if either we believe some of the Bible, I mean, all of the Bible, we don't believe any of it. And my, my mm -hmm. Bible declares the fact that he is coming back. He promises to return. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we, yeah. We, we recite that every, every, every communion Sunday. Mm -hmm. right? Following his, his yes. instruction, do this in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. Until mm -hmm. I return. You know, 
But when, when we do it, is, is, is it just ritualistic stuff that we're going through or, or are we really uh, anxiously anticipating the return of our master? Mm -hmm. And again, as children of God, this is, this is the most profound thought I can think. What do we want to find? What do we want him to find us doing when he does return? Be ready, worship he, and praising him. He, 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 he's, he's, he's going to ask us the question. Mm. You know, what, what did you do with my Jesus? Mm. You know? Cool. When I was hungry, meeting. did you feed me? When I, when, I, when I was thirsty, did you give me something to drink? When I was naked, did you give me clothes? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in prison, did you come see about me? Mm. Yeah. And again, so we, we, we have to be mindful of, of our responsibility as children of God. That's right. Back, back to the text. It's, it's kind of important. The verse 17 simply says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, <laughs> but mm -hmm. to save the world through him. Mm -hmm. You know, we, 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 we you can't even get our pea, pea brain around that thought that God. It says, love the world so much that he provided us an opportunity to get back to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we know the text that, that, that talks about in 2 uh, uh, Corinthians, I believe, uh, chapter 5, um, 17, 18, 19, 17, 17. Says that, that, that if the, any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Mm -hmm. It says, behold, all things huh, have passed away and God makes all things new. But that next verse I love. And the King James, it says that how God through Christ had reconciled the world back to himself. Mm -hmm. And the next verse says that, 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 or the second part of the verse says, and that he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. I didn't sign up for that. I didn't sign up for that. <laughs> oh, but you did. Yeah. Uh, uh, Christianity is a we word. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we have to keep in mind in, in this walk is that God doesn't save us for ourselves. We are now children of, of the most high God, and he gives us a responsibility, a task. Just like <laughs> he had given to, to uh, like Nicodemus' crew, their responsibility was to walk out what it meant to be, be, be chosen by God, to make it appealing to be chosen by God. But Christ said they missed the mark. Mm. You know, they, they were satisfied with just, just being themselves. You know? Ah. Mm. Back to the text. Verse 18 says, whoever believes in him is not condemned. You know, simply that. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But there's a but. <laughs> but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they've not believed in the son of god the name of god's one and only son this is a sad thought that 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 we should we should we all know folk either family or friends or co-workers who are going to end up in hell because of our, 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 our failure to even attempt to evangelize, because of our failure to, to tell them how good is, how good God is. Somebody should have told me. Yeah. That, that, that's our, our responsibility. Yeah. And when we fail, someone's going to end up in hell. Hmm. Verse 19 says, Yeah, and when I think about that thought, I think about if if we were out, out in the world and we saw someone standing in the street in the truck coming or someone facing danger. You know, we, we wouldn't just casually shout, you better get out the way, the truck's coming. You know, we, we would shout. We would cry out, 
prayerfully we're past that point in our life and our walk where we simply say things like, hmm, somebody should tell them something. <laughs> it's not somebody's responsibility. It's our responsibility. Yeah. Mm. Verse 19 says, this is the verdict. <laughs> the light came into the world, but people love darkness in instead of light. Because said these were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the, the, the light and will not come into the light for fear that the deeds will be exposed. Here's a but. Verse 21. But whoever lives by the Spirit <laughs> comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Yeah. That's, that's it. He, he's the one that we're seeking to please. I often talk about uh, uh, um, the thought when we were in, 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 in the world and full of pride and lust and, and, and passions that we think uh, things that are important. I envision this. I envision our body being a, a kingdom. You know, and the thought that in, in this kingdom, uh, there's a throne and that throne is my heart. And when we're in the world and be li living that pride filled life, it, it's me sitting on that throne. Right. Uh, doing what I want to do because I want to do it. And when salvation happens, when the spirit of God comes in and, and, and moves me off that throne and allows uh, uh, God to sit there. The motivation for our thoughts change. The motivation for what we do, why we do, when we do, what we do changes because our desire is to please God. Yeah. In your devotion time, take a look at, at there's, a, there's, a, there's a psalm, one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 73, I believe. Uh, and when we get to, to uh, I think, verse 22, 23, Asaph, the writer, is, it, after he's, he didn't complain to God about everything about how his thoughts and feelings about uh, what he sees. You know, he, he talks about how, he says, Father God, when you look down, I must have appear, appeared as I was just a brute beast in your sight, Lord. Yeah, and the thought is when, when, when God <sighs> gazes our thoughts, looks down and even and sees what we, what we, not just what we're doing, what we're thinking. How, how does he feel about it? Last week's Sunday school lesson we talked about came from the book of Job, where, where despite the fact that, that, that God had confidence and courage in this man and gave him a, a, a title that is above the title that, that, that we should all seek to, to obtain, that of servant. And he challenges the Satan, have you considered my servant Job? You know, P powerful lesson. You know, so the thought always should, we, we, remains in my mind. When God looks down and envisions me, individual, or, 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 or you, or anyone else, what do you want him to say? What do you, what do you want him to feel? What, 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 what title, what attribute would, would you want him to attach to your name, to your conduct, to your behavior? Yeah. I, I, I'll close with this thought. Here we have Nicodemus. Again, he came. He, he was sincere. He said, he said, we know that there are uh, uh, a teacher sent by God because no one can do the things that you've done. And although he came at night now, there's two other cases in this, in this book, John's Gospel, where he gets bold. Once when the Sanhedrin, I think it takes place in chapter 7, the Sanhedrin are, 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 are seeking out to kill Jesus. And, and he comes to Jesus' defense and tells them, you know, uh, they better watch out. And be careful about what you're doing. But towards the end of this text, I think chapter 19, he even gets bolder. And this is after the death of the master on the cross. He goes uh, to the authorities and pleads and begs for just the permission to take the body of Jesus down. Not, not by night. He's not doing it under the shade of, of darkness now. He's bold enough to come boldly. 
you know, and, and, and I envision what, what happens there is, is, is the same thing that happens in all of our lives, all believers' lives, that when, when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior and, and we get empowered by the Holy Spirit, the boldness that, that, that begins to indwell us. Mm -hmm. I'm going. And if I perish, I perish. I'm going. And that boldness comes from, from, from God's divine Holy Spirit living in us, empowering us. And there's so many cases in, 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 in this gospel, in, in this, this holy writ, that talks about like, the, the same thing that Jesus told his disciples. You know? Stay, stay there in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes upon you, till you be endued with power. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to be my witnesses. You know, but they're, they're, it, it, it's kind of difficult to be witnesses of God without that empowerment, without without being in, in, indwelled by God's divine Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's my prayer that that as we went through this text, that that something was stood out to you, something you took root, not not in your head, but in your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, and in that same boldness that that we see Nicodemus had developed. You know, we don't have to be, uh, and again, he came as an undercover uh, seeker in the beginning, but, but, but the boldness that he exhibited throughout, uh, by the end of this, 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 this book, you know, he, 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 he signed himself the task of just wanting to anoint the master's body. Don't care who know it. I'm going. So again, uh, Prayerfully, those who, who, who aren't uh, like joining us online that are watching by video, uh, thank you so much for your presence this evening. And again, praying somebody would say that done that, that, that piques your curiosity and in, in that, that boldness that uh, developed in the life of Nicodemus that, that, that you, you continue to seek you know, and, and follow the instructions that the master gave. About, about how new birth really happens by, by, <laughs> by water and, and the spirit, the washing and the cleansing and the indwelling of God's divine Holy Spirit. Thank you.